Hey guys, it's the Rift Wraith here, and welcome to the second Redstone tutorial video. So, here we are, and I have a few things to say. Firstly, last video, I kind of made a couple of mistakes with the big build at the end. It turns out, TNT, placed like this, because this is how I configured it, doesn't light. In fact, the only reason why the TNT light lit at all was, I think, probably because of the repeater at the back, which lit the back piece of TNT and then blew up all the subsequent pieces towards the front. So, I'm afraid that didn't work. You can see here, it also doesn't work with um, redstone lamps, either. Uh, I should have learnt a known better, because I'd just shown you that, um, earlier that that was in the uh, powering the lamps part, that that was a way that it wouldn't work. However, I have an alternative method. Oh, I hope that doesn't blow that piece up. Anyway, what this, what this does it, is it makes the um, current go up here, um, and there was another thing I forgot to tell you, and that was that redstone wiring on top of a block will weakly power it. So this will weakly power this block, which then will set the TNT off, and that will weakly power these two blocks, will set the TNT off. These are both set to four ticks each, so... Have that, boom, boom, um, one exploded, then then four, um, four ticks later, another one exploded. Okay, there are also a couple of other things that I forgot that could highly power blocks. Both of these highly power them in a slightly weird way. This is a trap chest. You can tell it's different from a normal chest because it's got a little red rim around this lock. Anyway, when you open it, it will produce a current, which will, uh, it will produce, it will highly power its own block, which means that current placed, a, a redstone wiring placed around it will be powered. So this is placed under it, and then this can take because this is weakly powered by the redstone being on top, it can take the current out of it. Four ticks, four ticks, four ticks, meaning 1.2 seconds later, that, those lights will turn on. There we go, that's to show you it works. And the daylight sensor uh, will tell you that it's day right now. And um, power this block. Oh, a couple of things I forgot to mention at the start of the video. Um, right, that reminds me, because uh, this is my daylight sensor configuration. There, there we go. This is so I don't have to keep pressing time set day. So there's the daylight sensor. So it will sense that it's daylight. So you can see the current coming out there. Uh, highly powers, uh, no, weakly powers this block, which turns off this torch, which stops the command block with time set day um, in it uh, from being activated. And then when that turns off at night, then that will turn on. Another thing, you're probably wondering why Minecraft looks a bit weird. That is because I installed the um, the shaders mod shaders mod uh, off forge um, probably a big thing I should have remembered to tell you at the start but it means everything looks seriously cool and it actually makes Minecraft a real pleasure to sh um, play you can see a cloud Where, where's the cloud I don't know. it's one of those clouds anyway so a couple of changes anyway I thought well I'm gonna go against my, um, this video is gonna focus on um, repeaters and torches so, you know what I said about not showing you crafting recipes? Well, I've decided against it, so... Hang on, I'll get rid of this redstone. So, here is how you craft a... Uh, so, there's the repeater, and you craft it like this on a crafting bench. Like one, two here, piece of redstone, and they've got to be smooth stone, so you've got to smelt cobblestone. And you can make yourself a repeater, and a torch is simple to make, it's just a stick of redstone dust on top. Well, redstone dust on top of it, like a regular torch, but you only make one. And they only have half the light level of a regular torch when you, uh, because they in the dark. Right. So I'll put these back. Um, so this, um, as you, as I used, I showed you in the last video, you can right-click these to make the delay longer. Default is one tick. You can make it up to four. Um, I'll just show you. They transfer current once after four ticks. This will transfer the current to the next, and so it will sort of. Um, one, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, nine times four is thirty-six. So it's a three-point-six second delay before these lights turn on. So you can can actually watch it like this. Uh, one, two, uh, uh, all the way there, and then boom, the light turns on for four ticks. Right. Also, torches do the same thing, except they take one tick delay to react to whether their block that they're standing on is powered or not. So if I place this here. You can see, uh, if you watch that like quick, look closely, it will turn on and then off for one um, for a bit. It will turn on for three ticks, I think, because that will it will be. Hang on, hang on. 
uh, I don't know. It'll be. It will turn on for as long as this was here for plus two because it takes two ticks to turn off. Anyway, also you can. So that that will basically the way it works is that's weakly powered. Um, so that will turn off and that that will stop being highly powered, which will turn that on, which will stop that, which will make that highly powered, which will turn that off, and all the way to the top when uh, that will highly power that and turn it on. Next thing. Is you, they can also, uh, you know, you can make a big tower of them. So you can see the little lamp up there, and I hit it there, and it will work. You see it flashing, and it turns on the lamp. Also, they can retain their current. So if I hit that, it will go, it will take some time for that to turn off. Uh, I'll show you that on the repeaters, actually. It's quite cool. Just wait for it to go all the way to the end, and then hit it, and it will go boom, 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 boom. So that these are useful for making timers. And also, I'll show you that the way of retaining current can allow you to make clocks. Which I'll show you in a minute. But now for a feature of the um, a special feature of the repeater, which is that it can repeat a it, there's a repeater lock function. So if you have if you have a repeater going into the side of a repeater, when you pull pull when that repeater is activated, you'll see one of the torches turns to a, a um, bedrock bar. That means that that will always stay at the same state state it is as now. So the moment this is off, if I were to turn this on, even though it's flowing, even though it's coming into the uh, repeater, it still doesn't activate it because it's been locked. But if I were to unlock it, activate it, and then I lock it again, it will be locked at full. So even if I do that, it won't turn off. So you can see that on this little rig I made. So if I turn, you can see that light there. If I turn that on, I can turn that the reason why it's opposite to this is because there's a if you can see, there's a, um, a torch here, which acts as a not gate. A not gate being also known as an inverter, i.e. current going in one end is... I, if there's current going in one end, it's there's no... Oh, automatic time step date. Hmm, pays off. Um, if there's current coming in one end, none has the other. And if there's none, it's current. I'll show you... Oh, if you... Oh, never mind. But anyway, look, you can see that here. So then if I flick this onto full, and I click the lock, so you can see... Not only is it powering this, because that's highly powered, which is powering that, but it's also higher, because that's highly powered, it powers that, which powers that, and that becomes a bedrock bar, and I cannot not do anything with that. So, sometimes it's nice to make a little rig. Um, right, now, for something called a pulse shortening. So, not only do these take time to, uh, not only do these take time to delay, but they can also, uh, the pulse actually going through them can be a certain number of ticks. So, this here is a simple pulse shortener. So the way it works is, when you pull this lever, this torch will turn off, which will mean no current is going through here. Um, after one tick, no current will be flowing. I'll show you. No current will be flowing through these blocks, which are being powered. Well, they're being powered by this, which is highly powered, powering these. So nothing. So after one tick, nothing will happen. But then two. That set. Well, both these signs are wrong around. That. Yeah, there we go. That's one tick, and that's two ticks. So there'll be three ticks later. This block will be highly powered, and so it'll turn on. So you have three ticks minus one equals two. The the um, delay will be in two ticks long, and then it'll go through here. This doesn't change the delay. It doesn't change the uh, length. It'll just <coughs> delay the um, delay the ticks slightly. It'll delay when this turns on, and then this retains its current for an additional two ticks. So when I flick this. It'll turn on for, even though this is a lever, and so it should keep the current going on indefinitely, it'll only turn on for four ticks. And the way you work that out is, one add two, which are these, uh, minus one, which is that, uh, plus two, which is how long that stays on, equals four, so it stays on for four ticks. Or, you can work out how many ticks after you pull this it starts, and then how many ticks after you pull that it finishes and subtract the two numbers. So to start, it's one here, plus the one here, and to finish, it's the two here, and the one, two here, and the one there, and the two there, and the one there. So then you have four, six minus two is four, so that stays on for four ticks. Um, another thing you can do, look, you have a repeater lock function here, so if I click that, that will mean now that it will be available to go, the current can now go up here and activate this, so to show you, that you can also it can also be useful for measure um, for making the uh, trap doors open for a shorter or longer amount of time to the usual. So obviously, if you want to make it longer, you can go duh, 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 and watch this. That's 
goes on for a long time. Longer time than it would have. Um, well, of course, you can add more in here if you want to make that longer. Uh, it's not the most effective. It's not the most efficient uh, pulse shortener without the use of. It's the, but it's one without the use of pistons. And as I'll be covering pistons next um, episode, uh, that's why I'm not including them. So if you open this, you hear the trap door opening, and then it closes again. After that will be. So let's calculate. It's four out four. Uh, four out four subtract one equals seven. So that'll be on for seven tenths of a second. Because that closes and opens, you know. Uh, and it doesn't retain its current control. Wrong. Uh, right. Now. There's something... Uh, because the way, um, it retains its, um, repeaters retain their current for the amount of time they got it. So each of these, because they're selling to four, will retain it for four ticks. So that can be used to create a clock, uh, which is, it will go around in a circle and then power this every so often. So each of these that will be every twelve seconds. Oh no, every one point two sec. No, every four times four is six, uh, sixteen. So it'll be every one point six seconds, this will turn on and off. Um, it's also activating this dispenser, which can be used as a sort of rapid fire cannon. So if I put these snowballs in here, every one point um, one point six seconds, it will shoot a snowball. So of course you could do that with arrows as well if you wanted to make a trap or whatever. Uh, and the way to power this, I'll just show you. So the way you power it is you have to have a pulse to start with. The easiest way to do a pulse is to um, place a redstone torch, then get rid of it again. So that shoots like that. Um, or, however, you can make faster. You can make a much faster clock if you reduce the delay. So if I oh, hang on, I'll break the circuit. So I can reduce the delay here. But it also means that I risk if the pulse is here for too long, it will fill up all of these, so it won't they won't retain their current. So if I have each of those on two tick, that will give eight every um, every eight ticks. So if I I have to make sure that I place this and destroy it within zero point eight of a second. Yep, much faster, you see. So if I put the torch in here, throw out the torch. There we go. Anyway, um, a lot faster. But you can make ones faster still by cutting the number of uh, repeaters. So these, both of these are set onto two, two ticks. So that will be a four tick, because that will highly power that, which will then power this, which will highly power that, which will power this, which will highly power that. So I'll go around in a circle. However, unless you've got really good reflexes and you can put a torch down and destroy it within 0 0.4 of a second, the only real way of powering it is with a pulse shortener. Oh, I forgot, Pul this type of pulse shortener needs to go through an inverter. And as an inverter can't handle any pulse that's um, any pulse that's zero point, it can't hold, handle a zero point one of a second pulse. Uh, this has to be a zero point. Uh, of the UC. you have three here minus one equals two, so it has to be a two pulse. So that will be pulsed to a two pulse, which is going to go through a four. So if I hit this, uh, why is it not working? Oh, I know why. Now I need to hit because that was down. So now I hit it. Okay, listen to that. A lot faster. Um, of course, you can make even faster ones with the piston, with the piston um, pulse shortener, because it doesn't have to go through it. But much more effective. You could take out mobs, I suppose, or, or enemy players, or whatever if you wanted with that. Um, the the reason why the piston one's better, which I'll show you next video, is because it doesn't have to go through an inverter, which means it can have a 0 0.1 per second pulse. So I'll shut that down. And now, this is today is um, this episode's big build, which is a combination lock. So it sounds complicated, but in fact, this is the basis of what that great big building is behind me. Uh, that one's slightly souped up. Uh, I think you'll see what I mean in a minute. But anyway, so the way a combination lock works is you've got um, a lot of uh, levers here. And the levers are connected to um, re repeaters at the back, which are then taking all their power down to the, this inverter, which is then turning on this light. This light told me that I got the combination right. However, since there isn't actually a combination yet, so I need to put in a combination. The way you do that is the ones, the levers which you want to be the right ones. So supposing, well, let's call this one one, and let's call this one four. So supposing I want the code fourteen or forty-one because you can't, it's not order. But anyway, flip that one and flip that one. But but th that would um, because 
because right now the code hasn't been set and the code right now is zero 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 the code now is um, nothing then that will turn off because of course that powers that and that powers that which goes to the inverter turns that off so if I so but if I want to change it so if I change it the way you change it is you choose the uh, you choose the ones that you want to be uh, the right ones and put in a, uh, put a torch here. So that'll act as an inverter here. So now if I flick these off, that will be that will be off because these torches are now powering it. And you have to turn the torches off to turn this torch on to turn on that light. So if I just flick that and flick that here, it turns on. <laughs> See, that's the basis of a combination lock. And of course, if I wanted to change the combination again, say I wanted to make it one, four, and then a three, so get rid of that. Put in the torch here. Of course, I'll turn it off because I haven't turned on the three, but I turned on the three and it's back on again. So, in a real combination lock, that would be replaced with a door or whatever. But in this one, this is just a demonstration. And now I shall show you this episode's bit, which I have to say I'm very proud of. It is slightly um, large. And because it will. Uh, let me not give to any hint, uh, clues about what it will do, uh, but be slightly terminal. I will get the combination right because what this is, what this does, is this one is slightly different because the door doesn't open straight away. So if I flick down these, the door doesn't open straight away because you have to press this button to submit the code, and then it will check and see if it's right or not. And if it's right, then the door will open. If it's wrong. Well, we'll see about that. Anyway, um, I'll click these because if I get it wrong, it will kind of not. It will kind of be terminal. So I'll show you the back of it because the back of it is kind of full of wiring. I'm not quite a lot of this stuff. Uh, the the actual m machine I built, a lot of it is accessible, but because I was I was trying to do this bit here, which is when you press the button, these retract and therefore allow the current, uh, allow the combination to go through. So here are the actual things, so here you can see a torch here, and there are a couple of torches on the other side. The combination is 137, which also happens to be the block ID for a command block. Bear that in mind when you use the slash give command. Um, basically, when you press the button, um, if, if it's right, if, oh, sorry, if the code's right, then this will be off, and therefore this will all be off. And this, um, because that's weakly powered, that will be on. And this here will be off. So, anyway, right now, when you press the button, these will both retract. And if that's still off, then the bad stuff will not happen. And when it, if it's off, that means the code's right, of course. And if this is on, that will open the door. But if, if you get it wrong, this will obviously be off, because there'll be no current. There'll be current going through here, that'll be off. So right now, this is off, because I've got it wrong. And so that won't open the door and the bad stuff will happen because if I pull that the uh, current will go through here um, there's an inverter on the button which means it will so right now the pistons are powered when you press the button the pistons will retract but I'll tell you more about this um, piston uh, piston transistor next video because it's it's quite complicated I was planning on using repeaters for it using the repeater lock function but I forgot that it wouldn't work because this relies on sort of states with this on, off, and um, undecided, and right now both of them are undecided, and for this one, oh dear, oops, for this one undecided will be, for both of them undecided is off, if either of them are on, then that will work, uh, but if this was supposed to be, like, say, a piston floor that would go, Ch then undecided would be off, uh, undecided would be on, and then if you were to um, do otherwise, then it would turn it off, and then when the when the piston retracted, it would notice it was off, and suddenly the floor would retract. But this one isn't a retracting floor, so um, yes, we'll see what happens if we get the combination right first, shall we? So the combination is one, three, and seven. Press this button. Haha! The door is open and closed. And we're in my uh, little diamond story here. I've got my diamond. Story. And my diamond sword is the bat spawn. If these light went before I put the lights in, I needed a sword. Anyway, not a great big fan of diamonds myself, but you know, quite safe. Okay, well, I suppose you're wondering what happens if we get it wrong? Well, you're about to find out. Right. Well, I shall choose 
the ID of another favourite block of mine, 46, which, if you know what it is, comment, because, well, I'll just see if you know what it is. So, if I press, okay, well, before I do that, I shall tell you what the stuff at the top does. Basically, the stuff up there, and the holes, uh, the holes in the side that have rails in them, these have, yeah, that in it. And you know what that is, right, don't you? Because it's pretty obvious. So when, if you get it wrong, then these holes here and those here, these will activate and come down here. Those will activate and come down here. Pistons down here will break the, um, they will break the torches that are keeping these doors open. They'll slam shut so you'll be able to get out. And also, these will come down here and it will blow up. Oh, I mean, watch the, watch it now. So, I'm in survival mode right now, which might not be the wisest choice, but let's do this thing. Let's press the button. Ah! That, my friends, was a good combination lock. And once again, we examine the twisted burning wreckage that was once our uh, pride and joy. Well! Thank you for watching, guys. I hope that I have taught you a bit about uh, repeaters and torches, and there are many, many, many functions. Both of them are extremely uh, important in all redstone circuits, from being the, the small, um, compact ones and the simple to the rather advanced ones. Uh, I must say, notice this here is where the the, the Torches used to be here, and the doors were on here. So when that pushed that, these blocks moved, and of course the torches which were on them broke. So those blew up, that, that, so that moved, and the doors slammed shut. And I got kind of blown out of there. Anyway, this is the... Uh, notice that when TNT on minecarts comes down here, TNT on minecarts will not blow up the rails on which it was running. So that's why all the rails are intact, which is an interesting thing, even though there's a mass devastation. The only problem with it is that it blew up the door to the safe, so should you survive that with blast protection armor, you can simply go, aha, I broke your diamond. <laughs> Never mind. So, thank you for watching. If there's anything I've missed, I will, I'd like you to put it in the comments, and I will have a look on my next video, which will be all about pistons, and there are also many uses. So, thank you for watching, guys. Rift Wraith, out.